Good morning, everybody. I am Vicki Pizzarelli um, with Engel and Volkers here in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. And I am here with my um, Coffee Talk channel with John Bellamore. Bellmore. <laughs> and um, he is um, home, he is with Homebrace um, Home Loans. He is currently in East Greenwich as well. And he is a producing sales manager here in, at Embrace. And um, he has been with Embrace since 2015. He's been a top producer, part of the President's Club recognition for the last six years running. And he's a number one loan officer for Embrace locally since 2019 through 2021. So John's a native Rhode Islander here in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. That's where I first moved when I first moved to Rhode Island. I love it there. <laughs> and he currently lives in Jamestown, another nice area. And he's got um, his wife, two daughters, and their dog. What kind of dog do you have, John? <laughs> she's a plot hound mix. Um, so oh. most people hadn't heard about that, but she's a brindle, brindle dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> From the I love dogs. I think I like dogs better than people. <laughs> yeah, it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to um, take any much of our time because we have like a short amount of time and there's just so much to talk about. And um, John's here to talk to um, home buyers or sellers um, regarding the, the tools that are out there in this market conditions that help either sell your home or um, buyers to buy a home. So I'm going to give the floor to you, John, and I'm going to share your, your slides and tell us a little bit about yourself that I haven't said already or about your company. And I look forward to this conversation. So welcome. Same here. Thank you, Vicki. Um, yeah, so I've been with Embrace for seven and a half years or so now, and I am now running the retail branch in East Greenwich. So for those who are not familiar with Embrace, we are locally owned, headquartered in Middletown, Rhode Island by Langway Toyota. Um, just over the Newport line. And so we've been in business since the early 80s. Uh, we're a medium-sized company, probably about 600 or so employees total. And we're spread all the way through every state in the United States. So we have these local retail offices and then the headquarters does all of the processing and underwriting. Um, so we have a, a nice local touch, really easy to get in touch with all of the processing underwriters, anybody that you need to. And then the Embrace office that we just opened here uh, early November in East Greenwich is our newest retail branch. And so I'm the sales manager here and I've got a team underneath me and we're looking to really fill this space up with maybe six or 12 other people um, by the time the year ends. So we're also hiring if anybody is, is looking for a position. So um, about what we're discussing today, you know, it's, it's a really crazy climate right now. Um, so we're looking at ways to do creative financing for both the sellers and e listing agents, as well as the buyers and buyers agents. So, you know, we're, we're not really in a market where there's 30, 40, 50 offers on a home anymore, but you still have to be wary of either overspending or over offering, I should say, on a house, particularly with these appraisal values. So the one thing that we are really looking at right now is you know, rising interest rates, even though they're starting to stabilize a little bit, they're still rather high. Buyers are getting priced out. They're getting burnt out. They're competing with cash buyers. I don't know where the cash is coming from, by the, by the way. <laughs> There's still cash offers out Not there. Mattress money. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, but the biggest thing is here is the houses are being listed at prices higher than where the appraisals are coming in. So, you know, the big problem with that is the sellers in most cases haven't caught up to where the values actually stand today. And so that really runs into, you know, problems when a buyer is making an offer. If they go in at list, um, you know, they could end up having to renegotiate when the appraisal comes back. So that brings me to our point here um, that I'm trying to make. So we have two different programs. The first one is called deflate the rate. So in order to compete against the higher interest rates that we're seeing today. We're offering, you know, that little tagline of buy downs. So buy downs are nothing new. They've been around for 30, 40 years, but they haven't really been anything of interest until rates started to climb. So what we're offering now is five different types of buy downs. And I'll present an example there. But essentially what it does is it just reduces your interest rate for the first two, three, you know, maybe one, two or three years, depending on how you want to structure it. And the way that the buy downs are normally presented is with a seller credit. So, Vicki, I'm sure you've, you've heard about that before. You know, the sellers will offer to help pay for closing costs. So on top of that, they can also offer to pay for this buy down. And the way to buy down is calculated is by taking the difference in your payment. So let's say interest rate today is at six and a quarter. If you do a three two one buy down in year number one, your interest rate is three percent less. So you start at three and a quarter. So the difference on your payment 
is what the buy down would cost. And that's what the seller has to pay. So the problem that we're running into, which we discussed, is values are starting to decline. So if you go in with an offer looking for a buy down and the appraisal doesn't hit, you have to start over. You have to renegotiate and you may end up losing that deal. So what we've introduced is our Approved to Move Plus program, where we will actually guarantee the value of a home before you're even making an offer. So you know that regardless of what the appraisal says, Embrace will cover whatever we need to, um, you know, despite the appraisal. So, you know, essentially it's eliminating any risk. And it also makes your offer a bit better because generally speaking, you've gone through underwriting. Most people just walk around with the pre-approval, go to different, you know, open houses and they make an offer. But has the underwriter looked at your file? Did the loan officer really go through the pay stubs? You don't know how strong that offer is going to be with just a pre-approval letter. So when we do the Approved to Move Plus, we start off with the pre-approval, of course. Then we collect all your documents and we get you through underwriting. There's no cost. There's no commitment. You're not really you know, getting yourself into anything you can't get out of, but it makes you a much more confident buyer. When you present that commitment letter, along with this guaranteed value certificate to the seller, it just puts you right at the top of the list because everything's already done. The appraisal- I, I, love, it. I love this, John. I mean, I think it's great for, li for listing a property. Yeah. Um, um, to give this opportunity to buyers that may come to you to purchase a property. Um, it, it's greater for both sides, buyer and seller. Honestly, it's really a great opportunity. Yeah. I and that's, interrupt, but I just want to put that out there. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. I mean, that kind of brings me, it's a great segue into, you know, what we are calling our list assist. So we're kind of marketing this guaranteed value certificate and buy downs or seller concessions, whatever you want to call it into the listing. So as a listing agent, you can say, okay, embrace is going to guarantee this value by doing that, you can entice more buyers because you can actually present, you know, let's say you're, you're selling for 500,000. If we're guaranteeing 510, you can do a 510 with 10 back and still get your bottom line. So it keeps the appraised values, you know, out of the picture. And then the listing agents still get their higher commission rather than, you know, starting to negotiate down with the bad appraisal. The sellers still get all the money that they want. The buyers get the help from the seller. So it's kind of a win, win, win all the way around. Um, now, is, is there a cap on this program um, above the, like, say the appraisal is a difference of like 50,000. It's like, is there a cap for it? So the only cap, uh, I, I see what you're saying, but the only cap itself would be, it has to be within a conforming limit, right? So this is for conventional loans within the conforming limit. So you can buy something for a million dollars, as long as you're putting down 300 and change, whatever it gets you to that number. As long as that value is within the conforming limit that they just adjusted for 2023, then we can potentially issue the, the certificate. Now, what you're saying is, let's say you're buying something for, you know, 500,000, but it comes in at 350 or, you know, God forbid, right? right. But it comes in much, much lower. Um, there's no cap. We've only actually written a check twice. One of them hurt pretty bad. Uh, it was it was like an $80,000 check, but we had to do it, because you know, to back the program. Um, for success rates on this, I can tell you that we're about 86%. So what that means is, you know, you present your offer and you say, I'm, I want to buy this for 510 with my 10% down or whatever it is. And we guarantee the value and the condition of the home. So 86% of the time we say, yes, you can do that. If we say no, we always come back with, we can do this value instead, right? So at least, you know, your bottom line. Um, and, and that's the, yeah, that's the best part about it. Well, uh, that's really great. I mean, I, I think that's really a great opportunity, especially with everybody so nervous in this market right now. I personally think it's a good market. Um, I, I, I think we're where we should be, we, where we should have been about two, two, three years ago. I would um, agree. Unfortunately, we had life events in the, in the world, <laughs> <laughs> health crisis. And in our in our industry, we have to get a little creative, you know, and Embrace has done that. And so I really love, love this tool. Uh, we spoke about it quite a few weeks ago about it. And that's why I wanted to have you here to talk about it, because I think it's such an important um, tool for, for buyers that are on the fence to purchase right now, um, which I really there's, there's always a good time to buy. And it has to be personal to you when it's the right time. But um, if you're waiting on the fence to purchase a property now because of the holidays, it's winter. 
you're you're on the wrong channel, really. I mean, don't wait yeah. till the spring when everybody else is looking. And same thing with sellers and with these programs, it really helps people. Um, I find. So I'm gonna keep, let you keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, it, so the big thing right now is that people are getting burnt out. I, I have many different clients who have been looking for, you know, six months to a year. You know, truth be told, many of them probably should have pulled the trigger on a house when interest rates were lower, but that doesn't mean that interest rates right now will push you out or should push you out. And that's where this creative financing, you know, kind of comes into play. Right. Right. Um, the big difference with the pre-approval and our approved to move program is that you're fully underwritten. There's no commitment on your side, but we're committing to lend to you and it's good for 120 days. So, you know, every time you get a new pre-approval, you have to generally get a new credit report. You have to, pay, you know, bring new pay stubs in, all that sort of stuff. Ours lasts for 120 days. So we've got a lot of clients that have some time to shop around um, if they're, you know, w without worrying about the, this approval going away. Now, we've seen in the last two weeks or so, interest rates starting to fall down. So let's say they do go under contract and we, you know, say the interest rate six and a quarter just to throw a number out there. But then, you know, two weeks down the road, it drops to 5.75 for whatever reason, right? Just because the market adjusts. We have a float down policy as well. So they can float down to the current market rate as long as we're within 30 days of closing. So even if we lock something in, they don't have to worry about being stuck at that higher level. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then when we do this approved to move program, you actually get a nice little packet with a you know, it's a proof to move card and it's an actual commitment notice. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you're the buyer's agent, that you know what's going on here and we're all on, on the same channel. And then specifically, because this program is not available anywhere else, it's very important that if, you know, an offer is going in, that I speak to the listing agent as well. Because if you hand them this guaranteed value certificate, they're not going to know what it means. Right. So that's very important that we would all get on the same page and just, you know, discuss what what this all what this all means. Um, I know that you spoke two weeks ago of, about these buy downs, but I figured it'd be prudent to kind of bring it up again. Most companies do maybe one or two different buy down options. We actually have five. I couldn't get the fifth one on here, but we have five. <laughs> so this would just be like an example of, of what this means. So the first one here is the three, two, one buy down. Assuming that your loan size is 510,000, you can actually reduce your interest rate by 3% in the first year and then 2%, then 1%. And then you go to your note rate year four through 30. So you can see that the annual buy down difference is 11,000 in year one, 7,500, 3,800. And that equates to about 22,500 over that three year period. So in this case, if you're offering, say, you know, let's say the list is 500, you'd have to offer $522,509 with that same amount of money back from the actual seller. So in this scenario, if the appraisal doesn't come in at 522, 509, for whatever reason, you cannot do this program. You'd have to choose something different. And so that's why when we present the guaranteed value certificate, the offer is written in such a way that these two things match. That That's really, um, that's really great, especially, you know, the rates, everybody's so worried about the rates. Yeah. I personally think, you know what, and, and people stop stopping from looking and buying because of the rates, but the prices of homes aren't going to like, it's not going to be 2008 again. No. The, those days are not here. Everybody's waiting for the market to crash. It's not happening. And um, <laughs> I do think we're going to have a good spring market. I think we're going to see prices rise a little bit around then. So yeah. if you're waiting for the right moment to buy because of the interest rates, don't. Because you can always change that down the road. I always tell this story when I bought my first home. I it was eleven point eight percent. Yeah, yeah. And I had to put twenty percent down. Um, there, there was no such. I mean, there was FHA, but like you, you couldn't get it. it you know, it was very hard to get. And um, it was a conventional loan. You had to do conventional. And yeah. at that time, that was a great rate. You know, yeah. so you know, I think we got spoiled. You know, with these low rates, and and that's the way it goes. It fluctuates. But home prices, you can't. You you know. They go up. You can't you can't change that. Yeah. It, and they will. They'll continue to go up for forever. You, you may see some wobble on that, you know, on that chart. But generally speaking, they're on an upward trajectory, you know. Yeah. I um, agree. That get, that brings me to a good point, though, because, you know, speaking about these buy downs, you would think that that twenty two thousand dollars is like spent when you buy the house. 
but it actually goes into an escrow account separate from taxes and insurance. So let's say the interest rate does fall back down into the threes or fours, you know, within 12 months, right? So you're on this buy down plan, but it's temporary. So if you wanted to refinance, you can use that buy down money to actually pay for your refinance costs because it's not used yet, you know? That's so, really great. Yeah. And a lot that that was something that a lot of people don't discuss. You know, where does that money actually go? It's it's just sitting in a, in a savings account, you know, essentially an escrow account. So you're making that twenty two hundred and nineteen dollar payment in that first column there on year one. That yeah. nine hundred and twenty dollars gets supplemented on your payment and paid through that escrow, um, you know, every month. So how would let's 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 explain this to a buyer. Say they want to put an uh, offer in and the house is five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. and they want to do a buy down, um, how would that be structured on a on an agreement, which a, on a contract between the seller and buyer? Um, I know it has to be a credit. Um, and I think it's very important too, with some of the realtors out there that don't understand it, with any time you put an offer in, always include your, your loan officer um, in on the initial offer so they can explain the situation. Absolutely. So it's not, you're not left in limbo. I'm a firm believer in that. I have to say when I get an offer on one of my listings and I have a loan officer reach out to me, I like it because yeah. if you have any questions and I know you're limited on what you can say, but at least I can ask the question about the program they're made and understand it better. So um, if you can explain a little bit how they would structure that um, for people that don't know. Yeah. So we would have that pre-approval done. And then they would either have gone through underwriting with the commitment letter already, or they're on their way in. So mm -hmm. they identify a house that they really like. They want to make an offer and they're interested in these buy downs or, or let's just say they want money back from the sellers to help pay for the, their closing cost or whatever it may be. So nothing needs to be written into the contract that states specifically for buy down or, or whatever, right? It just says seller is contributing X amount of dollars towards say closing costs or seller concessions, right? So that's the only thing that needs to be written into the contract. When you present your offer though, you want to make sure if you were pre-approved for 600,000, but your offer is going in at 550, number one, you want that to match. You don't want to show your cards to the sellers in most cases. Um, number two, you would want to, if you have gone through this program and you have your commitment letter, you want to present that to the seller. That puts you ahead of every other buyer that only has a pre-approval. And then thirdly, when we're discussing how you want this offer to be written and how you want the sellers to pay for cost or whatever it may be, we want to factor the guaranteed value certificate into that as well. So you should have three things, the pre-approval letter, the commitment letter, the guaranteed value certificate, when that all goes in. Now, like I said before, the sellers are not going to know and the listing agent's not going to know what that guaranteed value certificate really means. And so that's why I would want to know exactly what your offer is looking like. So we can go and speak to the listing agent directly and explain why you are in a better situation than the other buyers out there. The I, I absolutely agree. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think um, when an offer is put in, it's like a resume. It's your first impression and absolutely. you need to do it right. And it needs to be stellar and it, it can't come in. Like I, like I hate when I get an offer and, I'm going to send a pre-approval to you on Monday. It's a Friday night. And I'm like, well, it's not an offer because I don't know if they're pre-approved. Right. Like, you, know, you, you really need to have all like you have to have like a full hand, full deck of cards and present it really well when you put an offer in. Because to me, when I list and I see that an offer is presented me in a nice stellar way, I'm saying, OK, I want to work with this person. These, you know, this buyer and this agent, they got their act together. Um, they're going to be on on target with everything that they need to do. And when the loan officer is included, it's even better because you're only as strong as your team. Correct. You know? And we've spoken about this. You're only as strong as the people behind you when you're purchasing or selling. And if you have a weak link, it's just it's not there's going to be a problem. There's all, and sometimes there's always, you know, there's, there's problems that come up. It's, it's the nature of the bees. It's our job as professionals to kind of deal with all that nonsense behind the scenes. And half the time, sellers and buyers don't even know <laughs> some of this stuff we go through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we're trying to keep it a nice, you know, transaction. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So when you have a good team behind you, um, like like John and, and myself, you you know, you you have an easier transition into into your new home or selling your home. That's why we love the Approve the Move Plus program. It gets everything out of the way early. If you just yeah. have your pre-approval letter and then you're delivering paperwork or whatever it may be, 
you know, there's a million and one things that could go wrong. If you can eliminate all that up front, then it makes your, you know, your process as a buyer easier. It makes, you know, Vicky's job much easier. It makes everybody's job easier and we can close, you know, much more quickly. It's really just waiting on title and you're done. So, yeah. And, and, and I love that you put them through underwriting um, because, you know, things happen, things come up. And most of the time the buyer doesn't even realize there's an issue. Maybe oh, on yeah. Report, you know, it, I always say like, the realtors get Disneyland and you get the horrors, you get the horror movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. And, and everything behind the scenes. And yeah, you have to don't open a, that door. Don't go down there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put a puzzle together to for the underwriter. You have to put a nice like fairy tale storybook in front of the underwriter to, to help everything go through. So I don't think people realize all the moving parts that are involved with approving a loan. Yeah. And that's what there, there's a lot. <laughs> We're and you know we're doing a few things. I don't. I can't speak about any other lender. I've been with Embrace the entire time. But we do. Um, there, there's something called Finicity, um, which is if you link your bank statements, you don't have to deliver paper anymore, right? So you link your bank statements through a secure portal, and then we can see how much you're being paid. We can see what your bank statement balances are. So it, it allows us to take that data and push you through something that's called day one certainty. So Fannie and Freddie have pushed this out where if you link your bank account statements, we can see everything, which means we don't need to collect anything from you. So that's literally great. on day one, you essentially have a full approval. That's that's really huge because you know, chasing paperwork. It's terrible. <laughs> it yeah, I always, I always liken it to a second job. You know, I try to take as much off, off the buyer's plate as possible so they can enjoy the fun part of going and picking out a house and, and you know, competing with the offer and, and doing everything they can. Yeah, I love shopping. So let's go shopping for a home. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be all about, right. you know. So but I mean, that's that's really the gist of it. These these three things are, you know, the approved to move portion is getting the under, underwritten portion out of the way. The plus that we threw on the end is the guaranteed value certificate. And then when you wrap in the buy downs, either on the list assist side, so you can advertise with buy downs or on the buyer side, if you're trying to put the buy downs in your offer, those three things are, are where we really you know try to exceed here. Um, this, this guaranteed value certificate has been a huge hit. It's not offered anywhere else and it will put you at the top of the list. And if nothing else, it's going to eliminate your risk. You know, you saw, I'm sure you saw this. Everybody was waving inspections, waving, you know, appraisals, oh, yeah. waving mortgage contingencies, waving all this stuff. And that's kind of where this program shined. You could waive those without the risk associated with them. If you were going in raw with, you know, with the pre-approval oh, yeah. and waving all this stuff, you were in trouble in some cases, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, that, that was, um, crazy market, you know, not too long ago, just this past spring, yeah. you know, and um, it was insane. And I, I have to say, I want any person I work with, I did not have them suggest waiving inspections or any, any waiving any contingencies. And we got our offers accepted. I think um, when you are seasoned enough, like John and myself, you kind of know how to, you know how to negotiate it and make it work to benefit all parties. And I, I really believe, I love this like list to exist assist program and deflate the rate. I love, I love the whole aspect we were, we were talking about it. Um, I really see a great opportunity for, for buyers and, and for the realtors out there to, to utilize this platform um, to help their clients. It, it's really a great, great program. And especially if you're listing, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a great program all for all parties. Um, I do want to mention when you spoke about like asking for a seller credit and I know there's, and you're going to agree with me. I know it. Um, <laughs> there's such a misconception on seller credits. And no matter how many times you explain it from the get go, when it comes down to the, the near end and, and, and the seller goes, well, I'm not going to give them any money. They think they're taking writing a check and the buyers think they're receiving yeah. money. And it's actually you're inflating the price to compensate the credit and it's being kicked back. And Correct. it's all paper. You're not the seller's not writing a check and out of their bank. Yeah giving it right it's all the net net numbers right so if they right. want 500 you know for the if that's the list price that's what they want the buyer has to come in at 510 with 10 back so the number is the same yeah the seller's still getting what they want to get right. um and the buyer is able to finance their their closing costs whatever they're using it for um i think that's such a misconception and, and i'm you know I'm sure you had it like you explained it from the beginning and and when it comes down to the paperwork and getting down to the end 
<laughs> it goes one through one ear and out the other. Then nobody yeah. uses it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only time that it actually becomes an issue is when the appraisal matters and yeah. the appraisal comes in short, right? That's when everyone starts to throw a fit. So, you know, sellers in some cases, I would say, are still in the, the Goldilocks period where they think the valuations are still through the roof, but the appraisal are not supporting that. So as the appraisal values are starting to come down, you know, they're going to have to adjust. And so if you're, you know, throwing dice out there and going with a program that requires an appraisal and it, you know, has to stand on that appraisal, um, that could be an issue. So if you use this approved to move plus program, get the guaranteed certificate up front, then you know the appraisal doesn't matter. So regardless of whether you're waiving the appraisal contingency or not, that's your option. As long as you have that certificate, you know your floor, you know your risk, and so does the seller. So there's there's not really any other choice for them. You know, if, if there's five offers on the table, all at around the same price, but you're guaranteeing a certain value for them, you know, generally speaking, they're going to lean your way, you know, it's a good, it's a good, I think it's not even, it's a good gamble. It really is. I mean, you got the odds in your favor and for both buyer and seller, Absolutely. I think, I think it's um a really great um opportunity for buyers and, you know, to be sitting, you know, on the sidelines right now, like I'm going to say it again, you really got to get out there because it's not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. We're not seeing it change. It's, it's changing slowly. The price is coming down, but I don't think they're going to drop like crazy. And I don't think the rates to correct me if I'm wrong, are going to go like down to 2% tomorrow or, no, you know, no. I mean, not unless, you know, World War III happens, right? And then, then there'll be some changes. Well, let's, let's, let's try and put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> <Never know. laughs> no, I mean, the, there's there's a lot of reporting going on right now that says interest rates will probably stay roughly the same for the next year. Um, yeah, so, you know, some some small decreases, maybe f five, seven, five, five, eight, so, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it's, you know, 12 to 18 months where we will probably see the market stabilize a bit. It'll, it'll allow enough time for inflation to get under control, home valuations to stop declining. That's, that's a hard thing to say, but you know, cause the new England market is fairly strong. We're not, we're probably not going to see much in the way of declines, 10, 20 grand, you know, every now and then, but it's yeah. not going to be an overall drop of like a hundred grand or, or $200,000. Yeah. So know? Those, those days of like 2008 and 2009 are, 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 done i mean you know we could be wrong so we can have world war three something can happen you know but um oh eight oh nine was was just bad lending practices yes. everybody and their brother could get you know you'd be you know a regular job and you could buy a whole neighborhood without any proof of income it's you know it's it's, it's not crazy. like that right now it, yeah it crazy. and what we're affected now is by a health crisis Correct. um and this should have happened, like I said, about two, three years ago. It, we we were headed that way, and then we had a worldwide health crisis, and things changed. But um, it's still a great time to buy, and it's still um, with these programs John has at Embrace is really a great opportunity for people. And um, I appreciate you being here and telling us all about it. And uh, there's so much more you can go into detail about this. It's it's like you could talk about it for hours. I know that. Yeah, you really could. It's nice to have specifics, though. So, you know, anybody watching this, whether it's, you know, buyer's agent, listing agent, the sellers, the buyers, whoever, you know, happy to discuss how this actually works with real numbers, especially if you have, you know, a house to that you're looking to buy or to sell or whatever. Um, certainly able to put some numbers together for you. Yeah, and if, if anybody wants to get in touch with them, John, I'm going to put his banner back down on there. Um, here's his contact information, his um, his cell phone number, and um, I will add John's other information, your email, on your website as well to the to the chat box. So um, if anybody wants to reach out to you, um, if there's any word of advice you can get anybody right now on what they should be doing if they're looking to buy a home, um, what would you say? So it's still a fairly competitive market, even though it's starting to slow down a little bit from a buyer's perspective. There's not like 30, 40 people going to the same open house, but you still want to put yourself in the best buying position. If you just have a pre-approval letter, it's probably not enough to really put you, you at not the number one option, especially if there's anybody that may be still offering slightly above uh, ask. Um, that's a whole different story. But I, I would go through the Approve to Move Plus program, speak to somebody like Vicky who really knows their stuff and can guide you and make sure that your lending partner, and I'll, I'll call it that, not just your loan officer, but your lending partner is in touch with your buyer's agent as well. 
Um, that way, everybody can be on the same page. You, you know exactly what everyone's thinking. You develop that relationship and the rapport because it's, it's not just about numbers. You know, you're buying a house. It's your biggest expense in most cases that you're ever going to have. You want to do it right and you want to do it right the first time. I 100% I agree. And I always say it's like, don't don't settle. You know, you're not going to get the perfect house. There is no, unless you're building it. And even then sometimes it's not perfect, Correct. but um, you, you know, the house and you move, you're looking at it. You just, you have that feeling, you know, the house. And um, sometimes you have to look, sometimes I've, I'm, I've had buyers look at one house the first time out, they loved it and they felt guilty for wanting <laughs> to go after the first house. Cause they didn't see any others, but like, you just know it's the right house. So you really need a, a good team behind you to help guide you through, through all of this, because it, it's not even just the loan process. It's the appraisal process, the inspections. Um, it, there's so many moving parts. And when you have a good team behind you, it really helps it move much smoother. And right. um, I, I love how John reaches out to the um, listing agent and, and explains the program. And if you are working with John, you sh if you're not working with John, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> and um, definitely give him a shout out and, and reach out to him and, and ask about the programs. Even if, you know, I don't want to take business from anybody else, but if you're working with somebody else and you have a question about what you have, reach out to him, ask him, you know, he might be able to help guide you. Um, it might be a good deal and maybe he has something better. So yeah, I compare loan estimates and locked rate loan things all the time. You know, not, not every lender is the same. They, you know, a credit union is different than a bank, which is different than a, a direct lender, which is different than a broker. You know, they're, they all have different programs, different options. So, you know, you, you may want to look at one or two, uh, you know, before making a decision for sure. Yeah, just don't go make any large purchases, open new credit cards. Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> That's a whole other segment. <laughs> Vicky, I had somebody who bought a vacuum from a door-to-door -door salesman and it, oh, blew, oh God. it blew up their DTI. It was like such an expensive vacuum. And then they, couldn't, that vacuum. <laughs> they, they couldn't get rid of it. So we couldn't do their loan. I was like, oh, was I awful. know. I, I had a buyer. She, um, we were ready to, to buy. And, and the thing is, you check everything right before the closing, employment, everything to make sure everything's legit because you want to make sure they're responsible with their money and you're loaning, right. loaning hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, this buyer went to um, a furniture store. Uh, I was just going to say that. For a whole house. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh, my God. Thank God her grandmother had mattress money. <laughs> we were able to close. But um, it, you don't realize all the things you, you could be doing that could be making, you could be making a mistake to prevent you from buying your home, like buying a car. Right. Um, this yeah, so you're, you're not done until it's signed on paper. You're not done until you're yeah. done. So be careful with buying furniture for the new house. Oh, I know. And, and I get buyers too, that they say, well, he's asking, the loan officer is asking me for this and they're asking me for that. And I always say, if you're loaning somebody hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't you want to make sure that they could pay you back? Like they don't know you from a hole in the wall right. and it's not the loan officer doing this or the underwriting. It's the investor that's loaning the money and you have to, you know, you want the money. You got to, you either you do it, you comply or you don't get it. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a fine line with that sort of thing too, because you know, it was so loose and lackadaisical back in 08 and look what happened. You know, it got everybody into, into a lot of trouble. They, they tightened it up really, really tight. And that was like, it was overboard, right? It was almost nobody could get a mortgage. And now they're, they're starting to find a happy medium. I mean, if, if you can't produce pay stubs, bank statement, and maybe a W-2, then <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, again, John, I want to thank you for your time and all this great information. Anybody wants to reach out to John, his information is on the banner below his, his picture. And I will add it to the comments as well. Um, Please feel free to reach out um, to John or myself for any of your real estate needs and go to my YouTube channel, Coffee Talk with Vicki Pizzarelli. Um, like, like, subscribe, and you'll see other videos that will be coming out soon. And um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks, Vicki, for having me. Thanks, everyone. Bye.